Hey Randy, um, and everyone, sorry, I don't mean to have all these contraptions, but um, I don't have time to move the camera around in between my keyboard instructional videos and free will. <laughs> my brain is going back and forth. So, oh, and Randy, thanks for um, complimenting me about my keyboard video. I was just making another one, and I'm about to make another one after this, because I'm rearranging all these keys um, deterministically. So, um, my phrase, it feels like we think we know what free will feels like. Obviously, I don't believe that. I don't think it feels like we think that. Anyway, I just never know how to really say that. Um, I don't believe we have free will, obviously, uh, any more than I believe there's a God, simply because I don't understand the question. Uh, like, just like the question, does God exist? I don't understand the, the definition of God. Uh, no one could, I don't understand the definition of free will. No one has ever, nor could they ever, give a satisfactory definition of free will. So, you know, the whole argument ends up just being semantics, or whether or not someone believes in magic or something. So, that's, I just like to debate this because I want to get to the bottom of it, what you could possibly be thinking would be the agent of free will, if it's not magic. And if it's magic, what is making the magic happen? So anyway, uh, so that said, um, I, I treat people as if they're deterministic. I don't think we have to treat people as if they have free will any more than we have to treat people as if we think there's a god, some consequences thereof, or whatever. Um, but me treating people as if they're deterministic is the same way you treat someone as if you think they have free will just because we have different ways of looking at things. Um, we do have a theory that is fully deterministic. It's called chaos theory. I know I talk about that a lot. I think about chaos theory a lot, so I'm going to bring it up every other second. Uh, well, maybe you, what you mean is that we don't have a theory of everything that's fully deterministic because of the whole quantum effects, quantum mechanics and whatnot is mixed in there somehow. I uh, haven't quite bridged that together yet. I'm with Einstein. I don't, I don't really like it. <laughs> but it's, it exists and we have to deal with it. And certainly quantum particles would screw with your perfect dome. Um, imagine the dome is in the emptiness of space where there's, you know, you go to great lengths to make sure absolutely nothing is going to interact with it and then wait and see which way this ball decides to go, um, quantum particles would be popping in and out of existence randomly, and at some point one of them, you know, would bump into it and maybe eventually cause it to go one way or the other. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised because you do say that you're an engineer and that you understand that mathematicians come up with models and that they don't really work in real life. You've certainly run into things that are kind of crazy and, and hard to predict and you know there's the noise factor and, and by the way I'm sure you know this too that a lot of the noise that engineers have encountered <coughs> you know way back when in the 70s and 80s and 90s had discovered ooh that's actually chaos theory at work it's actually fully deterministic and not random at all it just kind of appears to look like noise but anyway that's totally beside the point I think um, so, yeah, I mean, Newton's laws are incomplete. I think we all agree on that. So, in that sense, I'm not sure. I guess you need to maybe um, show again what it is about this perfect dome theory that is really going to show us something here with regards to free will or, or non-determinism in the real world. Uh, maybe you could think of another example, <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it for now. I gotta get back to uh, my keyboard stuff.